My name is Subhu Kumarapan, as Steve mentioned, and I have been involved in this project for the past uh, four or five years, and it has been a very big learning opportunity for myself. And I have been, uh, they have been looking at, you know, various, they have been collecting a lot of information from the fields, they have been making a lot of measurements to understand whether it really makes a difference uh, for them to use various calcium supplements, gypsum, high cal lime, and lime, and quite a few other things. And from my perspective, uh, the way how I understand things is, Dollar values. Everybody understand dollar values, right? That's the whole idea. Uh, so we have been uh, talking to quite a few people. I'm sure you learned uh, from our earlier uh, presenters as well. So I want to present some dollar values to uh, tell you this is what we are finding as part of our organic corn survey. Okay, so the numbers that I'm going to present right now are primarily for organic corn uh, growers, say, in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. So are there any organic corn growers in the audience? Okay, there are a couple, that's good. Uh, even otherwise, okay, based on my interactions with the uh, advisory committee for this project, we learned that even the conventional farmers will benefit by knowing these kind of information. So you can treat it as a good case study to understand what are these numbers, how this will translate into, say, my farming operation. So that is the way how you may want to take it in case if you are not producing organic corn yourself. Um, so anyways, um, so I'm sure, you know, some of you, I mean, the people who are producing organic corn might have gotten this survey, and you might have talked a lot about that. As I mentioned, it was sent out to about 1,600 people in four different states, and about 860 responded, and we are able to use about 750 responses. And uh, most of them that grow organic corn, they reported they are growing it for uh, say grain purposes as well as silage and um, most of them have some amount of dairy operations as well and we real, uh, as we started looking into the data we realized that you know whether there is a dairy operation whether they are uh, more into producing vegetables those things did make a difference to the overall economics uh, so that you know it's a very unique set of group of people that produce corn um, that along with dairy and cash grain and some other livestock uh, that is prominently present there as well. And another important lesson that we learned was a significant portion of the respondents, they use horses as their primary source of power. Uh, how many of uh, you would be using horses here? Uh, you know, that's the thing. But still, uh, we will be touching on that as well to see whether, you know, whether the farmers who are using tractors, do they report uh, more dollars in the form of revenue uh, returns compared to the people that use horses, you know. Uh, so a significant portion of the Amish population, uh, they use horses, and that kind of, uh, we were able to capture that in the survey results as well. So anyways, uh, let's get into the dollar figures. You have learned a lot about all other uh, aspects so far. We collected information on what is your average yield, whether it is grains or silage, and what prices you are getting. Not everybody responded to the price question, but most of them responded to yields. And we also collected information on inputs. What are the different types of inputs you use, especially with regard to soil amendments, uh, the fertilizers, and how frequently do you use, especially calcium, gypsum, lime, and those kind of inputs, how frequently have you been using, say, in 2014, 15, 16, and 17? So these questions we asked. So here are some results for you. Um, that's the whole thing. Um, how frequently have they been using inputs? Manure is one very common form of input that was used and reported being used in 90 percentage of the forms. That was um, a big eye-opener. In fact, about a third of the respondents, they use only manure and compost and nothing else. Uh, that was an uh, interesting observation over there. When it comes to what type of manure, there were cattle manure, chicken manure, and quite a few other resources that you can see here. With regard to NPK, starter fertilizers, what proportion of them use? About half. I can say, I think, based on their responses. And only a fifth have been using micronutrients, microbials, um, foliar sprays, and things like that. Now, we are talking about gypsum here. So how, what percentage of the people use calcium inputs in organic corn operations? About a third, or even less than that. 
So that's what we found uh, based on the reports. I'm sure others also shared it earlier. Yeah, actually, that's the next slide. So uh, among all the calcium inputs, gypsum is frequently being used. 15% uh, of the respondents said they use, uh, I mean, out of the, all the 850, they use gypsum. Uh, and high cal lime was the next highest being used. Um, so the, whether these two slides, do they make any uh, surprising observations for you, for anybody here? OK. So you know, as much as I am telling you, I want to learn from you as well. So you please tell me what you are thinking about it. OK, so this is probably the most interesting thing uh, that you will be, you have been waiting for the whole day. So here we are presenting the numbers. Here in this particular slide, I have tried to put together what are the averages when you are using calcium and when not cal. And uh, say if you don't use too much of calcium or you don't recognize, I, uh, identify yourself as some type of a soil balancer uh, that you emphasize lots of calcium. So when you look at this, fertilizers and soil amendments, the calcium users are those who have been relying on a lot of gypsum and lime and high cal lime. They reported on an average about $198 per acre for organic corn. Whereas the no calcium applications are they don't feel like they need to use a lot of calcium or we identified them as non-calcium users, they have been using only $130 worth of fertilizers and nutrients and soil amendments. So one of the primary things that we should note here is that the calcium appliers, they spend a lot of money in general, all the activities that you see there. We collected information on field work, seeds and land rent. Whatever they reported, we kind of use some secondary data from USDA website uh, so that we can come with these estimates. As you see here, those who use calcium, some form of calcium, on an average, they are reporting $1,380 in the form of total revenues, which is $100 more than the no calcium applications. Now, that kind of tells us that, okay, you know, there is some response to calcium, you know, maybe they are all um, finding benefits with calcium application, which is good. But then they are also using a lot of other uh, inputs. Oops, if I do that, it doesn't show there. <laughs> okay, I don't know that uh, that thing doesn't show there. Uh, so you can accomplish $100 more in the form of revenue with calcium. Yes, that's great news, but you are going to spend $70 more with regard to calcium. Do you see that? That's the thing. In economics, we use a concept called as marginal analysis. Some of you may have done it in your Econ 101. Uh, that's what I teach. Actually, I was coming here from Worcester after teaching an Econ 101 class, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, one of the concepts that we, I frequently tell my students is, what is the extra revenue you get by doing something, and what is the extra cost of doing that same thing? Here you get extra revenue of $100, that's great. But to get that $100, you have to spend $70 more in the form of fertilizers and amendments, plus some other other expenses that also adds up. OK, so that's the thing. So when, let's go ahead, look a little closer into that. Any questions? Let's look a little closer into the numbers and see which particular input is being used. As you see here, here the differences between calcium and no calcium, and the calcium appliers on an average, they have been applying about $45 worth of calcium per acre, compared to only $2 for the non-calcium appliers. And if, you, if the people don't use lots of calcium or micronutrients, they tended to use more of manure and compost. Actually, the difference is 75 and 80 here. It's only $5 more, it shows here. Uh, but then in some cases, it has been even higher than 80. Okay, here I'm giving you only point estimates, but the reality is there is a whole range of possibilities that can happen. So some farmer may be spending $150 on manure and $75 or $100 on calcium. So there are lots of variations that you may want to think of. In fact, there are some slides that we'll talk about that next. Any questions, observations on this? Okay. So 
uh, one of the distinctions that I was curious about was, is there any distinction uh, between, say, grains and silage, if they are using it as a primary source of grains or silage? Uh, so here are some of the average numbers that I found uh, with regard to corn grains. On an average, all the 750 uh, farmer observations, they report about 133 bushels on an average yield, 20 tons for silage yield, and uh, the returns are kind of very similar in both the cases. Now, does calcium really make a difference? That is where we do the statistical analysis to compare the average amounts or the average yields and compare that for the two different groups and see whether it makes a difference. With regard to calcium, they are reporting about 142 bushels per acre with calcium applications without 130 bushels. And is the difference statistically significant or different? And the answer is yes. The same thing with, with regard to revenues as well. As I mentioned, uh, in this particular numbers, it's about $130 difference. That is also different. The expenses are different. But then when you calculate the net returns, that is revenues minus costs, what is there available for the management and labor, that is about 810 and 755. That is not statistically different from each other. So that observation uh, have been there throughout. We have been running this analysis. We have been looking at this data in various ways. It always comes up like that. Uh, anyways, um, so this is what we found with regard to the farmers that are using it for grain purposes. When it comes to silage, does it make a difference? Calcium appliers versus non-calcium appliers. Um, the answer is not really except for the expenses, how much they spend on those things. So the thing that I would like to mention here is, yes, you can find some amount of uh, yield response, some amount of revenue response when you are using uh, gypsum or calcium or some other form of calcium for grain purposes, not necessarily for silage. That's my observation so far. I probably have to, you know, Test it with people like you because you are doing it on a daily, regular basis and you would know much better. Uh, so if you feel like my observation is right, let me know. And if not, you know, I would really like to know more about your experiences and see what I may be missing just by looking at the numbers in the form of dollar figures there. So that's one important thing. So in corn, grain crop, sorry, the grains crop, you may be able to see some response, but then you have to spend more money to get that. As I mentioned, these are all distributions, you know, that's a whole range. Um, so all the numbers that I have given, they are just numbers, okay? They are just averages. Where, for instance, the average grain yield that I reported was 133, but you can see that it starts anywhere from, say, 50 and goes all the way to 250 bushels per acre. So the farmers who are getting 160, 170, 180 bushels per acre, for them, it's a no-brainer. They need to use more calcium. Or they can afford to pay for that extra calcium, $30, $40 is not a big deal. And in case, this is organic corn, and they are easily getting, I believe, um, $9 a bushel. So they can afford that. It's only like, you know, you are spending about $4 worth of, uh, four bushels worth of money, towards calcium and you are just going to capture the benefits of having calcium in your applications. And that's one important thing as well. So organic corn, that economics is entirely different from, say, the regular conventional corn. As you see here, the grain price was $9. Silage, we estimated it at $70 per ton. With regard to total revenues, again, there is a whole range. Uh, I reported an average of $1,300, but then it varies anywhere from, say, $900 to all the way to $2,500 some, in some extreme cases. Now, here I would like to identify one important thing. This is a survey, okay? Whatever number their farmers gave us, we trusted them, we believed them. It's written in stone, and we took it like that, and we used that. Now, whether that yield is actually $250 or is it $220, we don't know. Uh, so, you know, those limitations are there. So it may be a little inflated at times, so that uh, that problem is always there. But it's always nice to know what they are thinking 
um, how they are benefiting when they are using, say, calcium inputs and things like that. And that's the same thing. It's always a yeah, distribution. Generally, we realize that the farmers with dairy animals or animal enterprises with horse-drawn equipment, they reported higher net returns overall. And in fact, that's what you are seeing here. Um, the livestock farmers, the, the farms that have livestock, they reported higher yields. The farms that had dairy operations as a significant part of their enterprise mix, they reported higher yields. I'm sorry, the numbers are a little small there. And similarly, the, horse draw, the farms that use horse as the primary source of power, they reported higher returns as well. And this may be so unique only for, say, organic corn farmers in our survey. And as you, nobody raised your hand when I asked whether you use horses or not. Uh, so it may not be directly relevant for you, but it's always nice for you to think about how my economics will compare with that of what these people are reporting on an average from organic con perspective. Okay, so horses versus tractors. You know, I was kind of curious about that. So I did some quick um, uh, analysis about that. When you look at it, is there a difference in terms of yield? Yes. Net returns? Yes, there is some difference as well as you see here. Uh, the farmers that use horses, they report $827 an acre versus only 700 for the tractor drawn. So when you are using tractors, you are going to spend more on, obviously, fuel. And uh, you know, repair and those kind of maintenance and other things crop up there as well. That is why the expenses are more when it comes to tractor drawn equipment. This is probably straightforward. That is for corn grains and silage. It's more or less similar along the same lines. Um, okay, so does it, do I make sense so far? Being honest, <laughs> okay? I'm this one of the biggest farmers group I have ever talked to. That's what I was telling Steve in the beginning. I'm like, wow, this is a really big group. I always talk to, you know, students who are teenagers, you know, and half of them will be sleeping in my class, so. <laughs> See, I made you laugh. <laughs> uh, you know, you have, to, you have to crack a joke once in a while. So, anyways, uh, one of the important things that I found to be interesting are by, do, by being on this project for four or five years, I realized that we cannot expect returns from calcium or gypsum in one year. It has to be continuous over a long period of time. So some of the questions we asked in the, inter in the survey was, okay, tell us, did you apply it in 2014, 2015, 2016, and 17? Now we know how frequently they used calcium sources in their fields. So we calculated a number. This farmer applied three years. This farmer applied only two years. This farmer applied only one year. Now, then we, we can calculate the correlation between the frequency of application and the yields. So this is what we found when you look at those correlations. When I compare the yield, the corn grains yield, and uh, how frequently it was applied over the past uh, say four years, any calcium, it was 0.139. So what? When it comes to correlation, it has to be, it will be between negative one and positive one. And it's positive. Just slightly, but it's positive and it is statistically significant. So yes, the farmers who are using it on a regular basis, continuous basis, they do see some positive differences in their yields. So you, we cannot expect magic in one year application, but if you are using it on a regular basis, you may be able to see some effects with regard to yield uh, for corn grains. Gypsum is actually the most frequently used, and that is also positive 0.118. Uh, high cal 0.09. Uh, dolomite lime, they did not show any uh, statistically significant effect. Uh, when it comes to the net returns, that is the dollar values, and any calcium application over the last four years, that is also positive and significant. So the significance is important. Steve mentioned that there is not a lot of significance. Maybe I changed the topic now, or I changed the mood now, I don't know. But there is a bit of significance. Uh, we cannot over-rely on that significance alone, again, because it's not just uh, one particular, you know, uh, like a figure, we have to look at the range of operations and whether it is profitable for you or not. 
in your particular location. Uh, so that is one observation. And this kind of, um, it showed the effects in corn grain yields, but not in silage. In silage, the yields between calcium and no calcium application, they were very similar. So we couldn't find any statistical significance because of continuous application of calcium. Um, probably this slide was actually put together by Carol, and I just borrowed it as such or stole in a way. <laughs> uh, whether the experience matters, yes, how frequently they have been in operation, that matters. This matters mainly because their experiences are different, so they may use different levels of calcium. And because of that, you can see that there is some slight increase in uh, net revenues as they have been in farming for a longer period of time. So what are some major conclusions? Hopefully, I'm on time. OK. Uh, some, uh, there is some evidence that applying calcium helps increase the yield, especially uh, in the grain crop. But they have to consider, is it worth it for me in my situation to you know, spend another $40, $70, $80 to get that another $100? Now, this is organic corn. Does it make sense in conventional corn? where it's about 375, 380, you know? That's the big question. And will we see the same amount of effects when it comes to conventional corn? That's the question we need to ask in the context of our farms and, you know, whatever we are dealing with right now. Yes, there is some statistical difference in the form of yields and estimated expenses, uh, but then when you compare the profits, total revenue minus total cost, what's your profit? Is it different between yeah, calcium user versus non-user, not so much. That's what we are seeing here as well. Uh, gypsum and high cal lime over a longer duration of uh, application does show some effects. So that is something that you may want to consider um, in the context of corn or soybeans or whatever crop you may be interested in. Uh, so we have been looking into uh, you know quite a few things. Now only we were able to put together the data set. <laughs> you know, Caroline, I, and Doug have been looking at this for a long time. And uh, how much calcium should you apply? It depends on the uh, so your particular soil. And that is what I have been talking to Steve. And Steve mentioned that, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead, find what the farmer's soil conditions are, what is their cation exchange capacity. And accordingly, we can calculate how much calcium they should apply. So when the cation exchange capacity is more, probably Steve should say <laughs> this, I should not talk about this. I have no expertise in the horizontal axis here. Uh, when the cation exchange capacity is more, you cannot change the amount of calcium that is present in the soil. So you have to apply a lot more of calcium, and that is what you are seeing here, that you need to spend more money towards calcium. And that's what you are seeing. Now, we did not put any numbers on the vertical axis for a reason, because we are still working on it. Uh, so hopefully, we will be able to uh, create this type of information. And hopefully, this will be some type of extension publication so that we can share it with uh, the wider audience that are present here as well as outside of this room. Will this be of use? Based on cation exchange capacity, we tell you how much calcium you should apply, gypsum, lime, whatever it is. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics. I have been trying to get that, and we have the data right now. So I wanted to understand, OK, there are a large number of farmers. Are they efficient or not You know, in terms of input use versus output that they generate? So when I do that analysis, I found that uh, this is, again, you know, very preliminary. Um, the farms that have highest returns are the farms that are reporting grain yields of $160, on, uh, 160 bushels an acre. They are much better. They are considered to be efficient compared to other farms that report only 130 bushels an acre. So if we are able to reach that particular yield level, 160 bushels an acre, by spending only $400 on fertilizer amendment, seeds, and machinery, and land, hey, you know what? Maybe that is a good operation. That is an efficient operation. And that is where we are going um, 
you know, after. So we may be able to create some extra information, useful piece of information f based on the organic corn survey, and hopefully that will be relevant for even the conventional farmers. Uh, so as long as we can reduce the expenses, average expenses on these inputs, and keep it at $400, that is for, again, um, organic corn, and increase our yields at 160 bushels an acre, probably we are talking about good amounts of efficiency on an average. Your, your individual situation can be slightly different. So this is another analysis that will be coming out of this uh, research soon, and we have a lot of data now, so we are comfortable to doing that. So that's pretty much it. Yes, calcium makes a difference with regard to yield, especially in organic corn, but you have to spend more money for that. That's the overall message. <laughs>